accidentally calls me, I don't want it to like ring and then get us, because it, it would be known to do that, but I will maybe do it like that. Y'all pay attention, we, we propped the door open, so if you have a friend that you were thinking might still show up, you can let them know that that door is propped open, or you feel free to just jump up at any time and go on down there and, and let them in, feel, feel free to do that. So a couple things here, first of all, I know some of y'all... Plenty of y'all I may have met or have never met before in my life, and so I figured I would introduce myself. My name is Joel Kennedy. I lead at, uh, at Young Life at Rome, and I am the area director for all of Rough Loco, as we like to call it. Um, would love to introduce you guys to at least a couple folks. First of all, I'm really thrilled to introduce um, Holly Prince right here. Just go ahead and wave right there. Holly. Uh, so Holly. She's extremely gifted and somebody you really want to know. She just moved here this summer, probably like two and a half weeks ago or so, uh, to lead Young Life at Darlington. Um, she's really going to help us um, just have a ton of fun and get caught up in a crazy adventure together. So you're going to see a lot of Holly. It's going to be real fun. We're, we're just going to have a good time together. Uh, but there's also some other Young Life leaders in here, some that you know, some that you may not know. So if you're a Young Life leader, would you just like say your name? And where you lead, and we'll just go through the room and say that real quick. We'll start right there. All right. I'm Ellie, 
and I lead at Rome. Come on! My name's Molly, and I lead at Darlington. Woo! All right, listen. We, uh, we're going to have some fun tonight, I hope. Um, on the front end, though, I'm a little self-conscious, i got to be honest with you, because on the front end, I'm going to talk a little while. And uh, part of that is because my desire for tonight is that you guys would have a little bit of space to consider what would it look like for me to be a part of something really big. What, like to dream, and then uh, as I said a little while ago, the scheme on how, how can we make Young Life all that it possibly could be uh, this coming year for those of you who, uh, at, at each of your clubs. Um, to, to do that, I wanted to tell you all a couple things. First of all, um, we're going to talk a little bit about, we're going to look at Jesus together in uh, Matthew. We're going to look at a passage in Matthew together, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the whys of the things that we do in Young Life. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about how Young Life, the first Young Life, actually happened. What it looked like, how it, how it came about. Um, but I want to start by telling you, first of all, hey, thanks for being here. Um, you know, I was talking to some guys earlier today, and, you know, you're kind of like, I don't know what the junior, senior Young Life meeting, what does that even mean? I'm not sure what's about to happen here. But you showed up, and I'm so grateful that you did. I want to tell you why we invited you here. It's because we really believe that you can be an incredible, important part of doing something really big in your life this year. You may or may not believe that yourself. But I believe that all of us have a desire to be a part of something that's bigger than ourselves. And I know uh, your generation, if I want to act like I'm a really old person, and I will say, you know, your generation, I know you've probably heard a whole lot of stuff talked about, like, what y'all are like. And if I'm honest, I feel like a lot of what I hear doesn't sound that appealing. You're like, man, is that really what people think? Um, but I want to tell you that what I see is I see some people who want to be a part of something. They want to do something big. And I see some people who are incredibly positioned to do things on a scale that nobody has ever been able to do. Uh, literally in the history of humanity. You know, some people say that y'all are addicted to screens, that you can't leave your cell phone, uh, you know, set it aside. You can't, uh, you can't be together. There's, you're just anxious and all this stuff. But what I see is I see people who are actually uh, able to communicate um, across the world with a tap of a screen and empower people and call people together, rally people, do big things. I, I believe that I see some people who care deeply about every person. Now, y'all aren't people, you know, it's, I don't know if you've started seeing them, but they're everywhere. All of the political signs are starting to pop up in everybody's yards. We're moving into that election season where it feels like our whole country likes to take sides. And I'm a big college football fan. That's about to happen, too. We're going to take sides. But it's like y'all don't want to divide. You want to pull people together. You see the dignity and the value in every person. And you want them to know that they're loved, that they belong, that, that they can be a part of something really big. And at the same time, you want that for yourself. But maybe in the middle of all of the things that you're doing, you're trying to figure out, how can I do that? Maybe you're trying to figure out, that, like, Joel, I'm a, I'm a junior, I'm a senior in high school. What do I really have to offer? And that's why I want to look at Matthew together. Because I think there's some guys who are hanging out with Jesus, some friends of his who had that same question, like, what do I have to offer? And so we're going to look real quick at Matthew uh, 14. If you want to put it on your phone and read it, you're welcome to. But I'm going to set the scene for you. In this account, you see there's a lot of people coming alongside Jesus. There was something about him that drew people in. He was the most incredible person to ever walk the face of the earth. And so on this day, it was no different. There's this huge crowd, and it says Jesus had compassion on the crowd because he saw them as a, a lot of people who were 
wandering around trying to find life, but they didn't know where to look. And so he spent time helping them throughout the whole day. And then Jesus' buddies come up to him and they say this. They say, hey, Jesus, we're out in the middle of nowhere. And the day, like the sun's starting to set, he says, I think it's about time that we send the crowds away and let them go find some food for themselves. They're all stuck, starving. Let's let them go. But Jesus looks at these guys and he says, they don't need to go away. He says, you give them something to eat. In John chapter 6, it's the same account from John's perspective. John says Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do. He had a plan and he was going to do it. But he wanted to invite them into it. He wanted them uh, to figure out how they could be a part of it. Well, so these guys have just heard Jesus say, you give them something to eat. And they start looking around and they go, well, I mean, we only got, we got five loaves of bread and two fish. What are we supposed to do with that? And Jesus looks at them and he says, bring it to me. Give me what you got. And so he does, he, you know, they give him these five loaves of bread and two fish. And then Jesus says, all right, bring the people in and have them sit down. Let's organize them. Let's give them, you know, let's give them something to do. And, and then it says he, he took the food and he said, man, thanks, God. Thanks for what you've given us. We're going to watch what you're going to do with it. And so then he gives it to them and he says, all right, start passing it out. And they start passing the food out. And it says that, uh, that everybody ate. And they were satisfied. They had as much as they wanted. And then Jesus' friends started gathering 12 baskets full of leftovers. Like they had so much that all this huge crowd, it says that there were 5,000 men and then women and children. There was upwards of 10,000 people that just ate food more than enough with 12 baskets left over from five loaves of bread and two fish. Now, you've probably heard that before. Maybe you've heard it, at least glimpses of it. Maybe it's a familiar story to you. But this is what I want you to hear. Jesus invites all of us into that same space. Maybe you look and you're like, I, I don't know what I've got to offer. Like, I'm not sure what's going on. My, my school, it's a big school. Our town, it's a big town. Can I really make a difference? And that's where I would say Jesus says, yeah. He says, you've got something to give them. Something that, that will transform lives. It will bring life where people are walking around uh, wandering with questions and doubt, wondering if anybody cares about them. You know, maybe you're kind of wondering, hey, what, what is Young Life all about? Like, what's the point? Uh, maybe you've been to a bunch of Young Life meetings. Maybe you've never been to one, and you're trying, you've just heard about it. Or maybe you're wondering, what's it about? Well, I want you to know, the reason we are here, the reason these Young Life leaders have said, yes, I want to be involved in this ministry is because we believe that there are thousands of high school folks in Floyd County who deserve to know that they're loved. They deserve to know that they have value and dignity, that they have a place to belong, where they can taste really crazy good adventure. They can have a ton of fun and they can stop having that anxiety and worry about what are you thinking about me? Am I doing this thing right? They just have a space where they can belong. And ultimately, we want to bring them face to face to Jesus. That they have an opportunity to consider that we believe that's where life is found, in following Jesus. And so on Monday nights, we get together because we want to give people a taste of what life can really be like. But I'm going to let you in on a little secret, right? You guys live 24-7, basically, with all your peers in your high schools. And those of us that are Young Life leaders that said we, we introduced ourselves to you, we can show up from time to time as your school administration will allow us. We can give a little bit of time. We can be present. But the reality is we don't have the ability to impact people, to influence them to live right alongside them and love them the way that you do. And so for the next couple minutes, what I would love to do is kind of pull back the curtain and tell you why we do the things that we do as Young Life leaders in the hopes that maybe you'll go, oh, I love that. I'd like to be a part of that. And then in just a minute, 
we'll have some chance to maybe sit around and go, how can we get to be a part of that too? Y'all come on in. So glad y'all are here. You wanna, you, if you want to grab a chair, you can grab a chair. If you want to just sit down on the ground, you're welcome to do that too. Um, so just so you know, we're looking at how do we get involved in making Young Life the best thing that it can be. And I'm about to, like I said, pull back the curtain. We're going to talk about some of the things that we do as Young Life leaders. And this is sort of like trade secrets, y'all. You're like in on the inner circle. And so uh, you can use that to your advantage. Uh, do whatever you want with it. My hope would be that you'll do uh, something that will make Monday nights the best they've ever been in this community. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click this. Uh, I'll come back to that one um, if I remember. Help me remember uh, dates. Y'all tell me. All right. Hey, remember to get dates too because I want to tell y'all where you can get involved. Things that are upcoming. But the whys of club, all right? You can see these bullet points right here. I'm going to stand up for a minute uh, because it feels a little awkward to sit right there with that there. All right. So how many of you guys have seen like Young Life leaders showing up at games or practices or lunch tables? Uh, how many of you guys have seen that and you're like, why in the world is that happening? You, you've seen it, right? Anybody else seen Young Life leaders around? They've been showing up? Yeah, yeah. I've gotten the question a few times. What's up, man? So glad you're here. I've gotten the question a few times, like, hey, like, why are you here? And, you know, I've got a couple kids that actually go to Rome, and they're like, why is your dad just wandering around the lunchroom? What's happening right now? Um, football guys are like, hey, dude doesn't have a son who plays on the team. Why is he at practice every day? Well, let me let you know why. Right here it says, because we want to build relationships. We want to know people by name. And we want to get to care for them in, in everyday life, like all of the things that are happening. We tell our young life leaders, y'all come on in, make some room, sign on in. We tell our young life leaders this, we want to become a part of the fabric of your school. Like what that means is whenever something big's happening, we want young life to be there. The challenge is we can't be everywhere all at once, but y'all can be. Y'all can, we, if we did it together, we can be in a lot of different places. Our hope would be that even on Monday nights, hey, say there's a big baseball game, a volleyball game, we're going we're gonna to go to that game, and we're going to show up, and we're going to bring signs, and we're going to cheer people on, and we're going to cheer for the all-stars, and we're going to cheer for the ones that you know, do a really good job of keeping that bench warm and kind of wonder, like, does anybody see me? Because we're for every person. We want to go to all of the school things because our desire is that every person at your school, every adolescent, every teenager in Floyd County would know that someone sees them, knows them, and loves them. Uh, if you think about it this way, part of the reason we want to know people by name is because when somebody calls you by name, it's, it, it means they know who you are. It means that they care about you, that they see you. It's been said that the sweetest sound you can hear coming off another person's lips is the sound of your own name being spoken. And so we, we really value that. We want you to know that you matter. Uh, you could do that too. I, I'm not going to get into it right now, but the reason I got involved in Young Life as a high school freshman was because a junior called me by name. He knew who I was, and I was like, what in the world? Y'all have that impact. You have that influence. Um, maybe you've heard, hey, we have Young Life Club at 747, and you're like, why in the world do you say, like, why not say 745 or 8 o'clock? Why, why do we say 747? Well, we say 747 because it sticks with you. It's an awkward time that you're just going to remember. But maybe you've shown up, and then you're like, well, I show up, and we just hang around. Like, and then we don't actually start until like 8 or a little after 8. It's just a lot of wasting time, so I'm going to show up a little bit later and a little bit later. Have you ever wondered why we do that? Anybody get any ideas why we would start? Like, 747 is when it starts, but, but we hang out. Anybody got any ideas, thoughts, suggestions? What you got? We get to know each other. Come on, man. Tell me your name. Avi. Avi? Avi. Avi. All right, good. It's good to meet you, Avi. We have yeah. Avi. Maybe. Uh, I was here last week. I see. You were here last year? Just to see. Rome Young Life. Uh, I'm good at this. But here's the deal. We do hang out because we want to build relationships. We want to get to know people. And the reality is if we come upstairs and we just start having fun or we go into the barn or we go into the gym and we just start going crazy, we might have a lot of fun, but are we really knowing people? So that's why we do that. 
Then we come come into club, and there might be a welcome. You might have young life leaders like Half Avenue. You might have music real like playing real loud, bringing that energy up. We're bringing people in because we want them caught up in something where there's a lot of fun. They're tasting what adventure feels like, what what big full life is supposed to be like. And then after the welcome happens, you know, we sing some songs. What kind of songs do we sing at Young Life? Anybody anybody want to throw some ideas out? Pop. Pop? We sing some pop. Wagon wheel. Wagon wheel. Okay, we sing some wagon wheel. What other songs do we sing? Like what kind of songs? We got pop. Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Popular. Popular songs. That's right. Why do you think we sing popular songs? So people will feel like it's such like pushed on you, Christianity, and they don't want. Yeah, that could be part. That's part of it too, for sure. You don't show up. Like we're not trying to get everybody. I'm gonna let you in on a secret. We're not trying to recreate a youth group at a church. There are so many fantastic churches in this community. We want to work alongside them. We are trying to create a space where people who don't feel like they belong in a church, they don't have a space. They can come in here, and they find it. And they can get even more involved in church as they get interested. So yeah, it's a little less like threatening. Like, oh, I know this song. But also think about this. We want people to feel like they belong. If you step in and you hear a song you recognize and everybody's singing it, you can chime in. If we're singing a song you don't know, you automatically start feeling like, I'm not sure if I, this is my place. So we're always trying to think about what do people like? The songs that we sing, what are they saying? What are they about? Um, songs are involved in that. Mixers is like, if you come to Young Life, there's a ton of people. Like everybody that's at Young Life, we're playing the games together. That's what mixers are. Any ideas why we do that? Any thoughts? Community. What's that? Community. Community. How so? Tell me more. So like get to be involved with like others that we may not specifically yeah. be new to. Yeah, it's, it's pulling people together. You're having fun. You're laughing. You're involved with people maybe that you don't see face to face like all the time. We want everybody to be caught up in the fun. Everything that we're doing is trying to pull people in. But think about this too. That's where as Young Life leaders, and I would love for y'all to be in on this too, if we're trying to create a space where everybody feels like it's for them, what happens when we play one of those mixers where it's like, hey, pair up. Find just somebody to pair up. What happens to the one person that's like, no, I don't know who I'm pairing up with, and they start backing up? You know, sometimes our Young Life leaders, our heads are on swivels. We're looking for those folks, and we'll be like, hey, come on in. Let's play the game. But how much more impactful would it be if we all had those eyes to see? And we don't just run to our best friend like, man, River, it's so fun to play with you. I was just, you know, partner up with you. But we're looking. Where's that one? Where's that one that's like, I just showed up. I'm not sure. Well, how can I pull them in? Not in a like, oh, my gosh, you're a little obsessive. Back up. But like, man, I feel like I can, I'm can. i a part of this. They see me and they care about me. That's what we're trying to do with mixers. What about those games where we pull people up front? Y'all seen some of those? What happens in those kind of games? What are we doing in those, those games where we pull like four or five people up front? What do you remember? What you seen? What'd you say? Competition and challenges. Competitions and challenges. We're having some fun competitions up front, aren't we? What happens in those kind of games? The best of you comes out. The best of you comes out. It's deep. I like that. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a fair answer. I would say that's a pretty fair answer. Here's what I would say. What we're trying to do with these games where we pull people up front is we, we want to bring those people up and celebrate them as if they've never been celebrated before. We're not bringing people up to like try to um, you know, size people up and lift one person up and tear everybody else down. We're not making jokes on, on the people that are up there, at, you know, uh, putting them down. We're, we're really trying to celebrate the people there. So whoever wins, we're going crazy for them. We're trying to cheer them on. Our hope would be that the whole crowd that's not up there is going crazy for the people that are playing the games. They're laughing. Because, you know, I don't know about y'all, but more often than not in life, it feels like we only get attention that's like negative attention. It's ne it, it, you get the attention when you drop the ball. You get the attention when, you know, somebody breaks up with you or you said something really stupid or whatever it is. That's when you get the attention. And what we want to do here is we want to go, no, no, no. You have value. You are loved. Not because you did something really great. Not because you have skills. You're valued and loved because the God of the universe says you do. Like you are that worth it. And so we want people to taste that. So you may notice... 
Young Life leaders get up there and we're laughing and we're having a good time. But if there's jokes, we're the ones making the jokes of ourselves. Y'all seen some characters come out? Maybe some friends at Rome High are like, if Ian and Joel walk out with their shirts cut off one more time and a wig on, I'm going to throw up. I don't understand why it's happening. Y'all, here's, here's why we do those kind of things, why we have the crazy characters. We were talking about it actually yesterday as we were driving back. We had a leader retreat up uh, near Windy Gap. We were driving back and we said, you know, we used to watch all these Saturday Night Live skits. And you'd take these characters and then you'd bring them to your club and you'd like create them so that one, people kind of recognize it, but we get to laugh together. We get to have a lot of fun. And, and we're, we're not afraid to come out and look really stupid. And here's why. Because we really believe that God says we have value, that he loves us just as we are. And so we don't have to put on a front. We don't have to have the masks and the walls up. We can just be ourselves. We can take ourselves less seriously. And our hope is that as we do that, as we invite you into a place where you can laugh, you can do the same thing. You begin to experience, you know what, you're right, this is pretty fun. It's nice to not have to worry and to have my, my guard down. I'm in a safe place. I'm loved. And I don't have to worry about what everybody's thinking. That's why we do those skits with characters. And y'all, everything that we do in Young Life, it's, it's like a funnel to the end of Young Life Club. Our desire is that we would find uh, the, every person that comes through the door for Young Life Club that wherever they are in their opinions and their thoughts about who Jesus is, that they would be brought to a space where they, they have the safety to ask questions, to doubt, to consider, what if this guy Jesus is really for real? What if he really does love me right where I am? What if he made me to be a part of a huge story? And so we try to present Jesus in a way that's incredibly compelling that draws people in. So, y'all, that's the whys of club. Uh, for uh, just a second, I would love to hear from y'all. What stuck out to you? Anything that you were like, oh, that makes sense. I didn't know about that. Or, I got nothing. Just so you know, I'm comfortable with awkward silence, so I'll be quiet for a little bit. One of the people who are up there playing the games, you, you said uh, you're celebrating me. I didn't think that. You what? So it was a new concept to you. you. You're not debating. Because if so, we can talk to our model leaders and be like, come on, guys, you got to celebrate. Do what? It's pretty, it's pretty bad. He bullies us. Oh my God. Oh, it's River, the truth is coming out. <laughs> How much is he in there? How much does River get paid? Zero dollars. Yeah, we can do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey, I would say if some of these things stick with you like that, here's what I want you to consider is how can, if that's the why, if that's what we're trying to do, how can I help make that happen in a bigger way?